I say to them tonight, there is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. This is our hometown of Portland, Oregon, a city with a long history of protest and political activism. During the summer of 2020, it was put in the national spotlight for massive demonstrations over the killing of George Floyd. Portland became a symbol of the country's divisiveness during the 2020 presidential election, an election marked by the highest levels of polarization this country has seen in decades. This is not at all a new problem. Polarization in America has been steadily rising for decades, it's a problem that echoes from the halls of Congress to your family's dinner table, and it threatens to tear our nation apart. We start off in our nation's capital, where Congress people are increasingly voting strictly along party lines. Party line voting has risen to nearly 90%, a 30% increase in the last 40 years. This has disastrous effects on our political process. If we have increasing partisan polarization with no break, no other option, and no willingness to compromise, I think it ends with violence in the streets. That's what we're seeing now. And uh, increasing congressional gridlock and democratic dysfunction. But why are so many elected officials unwilling to compromise? Because they are told that if they, they don't adhere to the party line, they will be challenged in a primary, they won't get money from their Congressional Campaign Committee or their local Republican Party. Uh, there are a lot of ways that can make life difficult for those who want to try to do what their conscience tells them to do, even though it isn't exactly what the party wants them to do at that particular time. The growing levels of polarization in Congress is also a product of increasing partisanship in the nation's media, an issue that has eroded the foundation for what we believe to be true. A recent study by the Pew Research Center finds that the news sources that Americans believe in are heavily divided along partisan lines. For instance, over two-thirds of Republicans trust media outlets like Fox News and distrust sources such as CNN. The opposite is true for Democrats. This has led to the creation of media echo chambers, where partisan beliefs are amplified and reinforced without alternative viewpoints. It's very possible, becomes ever more possible every day because of the internet and social media and technologies to reduce ourselves to tiny little bubbles um, of our own reality and our own truth. And they, don't, they don't have to be malevolent to, or lead to violence or, or horrible consequence, but just ways in which we no longer have a common language, a common understanding, a common set of aspirations and common purpose. These echo chambers widen the gap between the two parties' ideologies, creating a rift in the very fabric of American society. Since 1994, the political values of Americans have shifted drastically. Not only has this divide changed the way that we see public policy, but also our neighbors and friends. A recent study found that Thanksgiving dinners were significantly shorter in places where Americans share meals across party lines. You know, the past couple of Thanksgivings have been a little more tense than I remember growing up, and, and that's a reality. Our holiday get-togethers are going to be short. They're going to be polite and superficial. We didn't really have a lot of, frankly, deep conversations in the last four years because it was just kind of this thing hanging over us. Polarization at its extreme has led to open hostility, such as during the infamous 2017 rally in Charlottesville, which resulted in one dead and over 30 injured. The examples go on and on. It was uh, really heartbreaking to watch uh, this building that I revere uh, being engulfed by an angry mob that was incited by the President of the United States. Abraham Lincoln said, if this democracy republic falls, it will be from within. If we don't start to reach across the aisles, if we don't start to breach these divides, we will lose what we have. And so I really think that the sixth can serve as a crucial reminder to all of us that we do have a role to play in our politics and in upholding our democracy, and that that's something we need to be doing each and every day. It's clear that polarization is a pressing issue in our country that needs to be addressed. But how do we find common ground? By bringing people together, bring them into the process. Let's decide what things there are where we agree. 
And there's no limit to the number of areas if we're focusing on areas of agreement. There's a wide range of them. You know, you would think people would want to, to work together on them, and I, and I think they will. National service um, is a way to require us to mix um, and actually activate the potential of our diversity. Have citizen redistricting. Take redistricting out of the hands of politicians. I always say that uh, they should pump us one song in all the common areas of the capital. Title, you can't always get what you want. Because the lyrics of that song is, you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. In 2021, Congress and the new president must address the problem of political polarization. Only by coming together and finding common ground can we hope to solve the issues of our time and unite together as Americans.